let's talk about reducer. Now we have a reducer. We're gonna spray a job that, you know, is multi-panels, five, six, maybe even seven panels. The temperature might be 70 degrees outside. In that case, we probably can get away with a normal temperature reducer. Now most of reducers, but not all the time, will also give you a temperature range on the front of that can or on the side as well. So that's always important to see if that's available. If not, you can always refer to a TDS sheet, a technical data sheet, and that may point you in a better direction as well. But there's a lot of things to think of. We may be spraying a seven or you know, eight panel job, a large job, an overall, and a, a normal temperature day, but we may want to select a slower reducer at that point. And you might say, well, Bob, why would we want to select a slower reducer? Because the temperature that I'm spraying in, it lines up. Well, we're spraying a large job. The ideal thing is, is when we spray a large job, that when we get back around maybe to where we started, that that stays just a little bit wet so our overspray will melt into that. Okay, if we do the exact opposite and we use a reducer that's drying way too fast for the temperature we're spraying in and we're spraying a large job, and by the time we get around that job and get back kind of in the area where we started, our overspray is probably not gonna melt into that and we're gonna end up with a real dry grainy substrate. Now slower reducers will almost always give us better metallic control as well, right? So if you're always in between maybe a temperature range, chances are you always wanna to lean towards the slower side. Now, when you spray something that actually is drying a little bit slower, man, the application is so much nicer. It'll tend to hit a panel and it'll roll over and it'll relax and give you a real smooth flat surface. However, if we're spraying with a solvent that is drying too fast, then we're probably more than likely gonna over apply that material. We may trap solvents in there because the surface may skin over and it may cause fuzziness, dieback, and maybe even solvent pop later on. So always pay attention to the temperature we're spraying in. Yes, very important. But we also want to pay attention to, hey, what's the size of the job that we're doing? So that's kind of a little bit about some of the reducers that you may want to consider and some of the things that correspond with that. Now there again, if you're borderline and you're doing a small job, right, you can always get away with leaning on the faster side. There again, if it's big though, lean on the slower side.